It all came out of almost 50 years of experience in the, the restaurant and hotel industry. We talked about what we could do to be transformative for the food industry. The whole farm cafe concept really caught us. And then as we started looking at the environmental piece, looking at the local food system, how we interact with the community, this seemed like the right thing to do. A restaurant concept that would be a teaching uh, environment for not only for restaurateurs, but also for the community. We looked at putting a cafe on a farm. And originally we were going to team with a farmer and they would do the farming and we would do the cafe. The original site fell through for a number of reasons. They actually shifted their whole thinking to, wait a minute, what if actually we owned the farm upon which we could build this cafe? Yeah, Marcus, can you take us back to the conversations about WC? One thing I became aware of was how much of an abuser of energy and water uh, restaurants can be. There had to be a better way. You are an LBC project. The Living Building Challenge is the certification system with the highest aspirations. They're really trying to cross that sustainability boundary and into focusing more on living systems. In our hearts, we want to be LBC compliant but our prime directive is to make the farm work. Well, we need to understand that we can be just as strong achieving your prime goals and doing an LBC. We started to think not about sustainable, meaning don't do harm, to more regenerative kind of thinking. And we wanted to fashion a way to grow the community's understanding of farming as it involves the local food system in total. Planting's here. Great. We are a farm that happens to process its own food into consumables. How does this team need to shift how we're thinking? When we first started working with Duke and Monica, they were very intrigued by an integrative process. Functionality and flow within a restaurant. I am interested in permaculture. However, they hadn't really had any experience with regenerative thinking. Well, it contributes to the sensory experience. Jason, what you just described is engines for regenerating our communities. So that was introduced to them and they immediately were inspired by that. All this was fenced in on the other side. And so we bought the farm. <laughs> Getting the farm up and running in the last three years was not on our agenda, and <laughs> here it is. Neither Monica or I have farming backgrounds. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Didn't see my first live cow until I was 13. We hired talented farmers and people who can work with all that beautiful farm produce and meat. Moving here, this was an absolute blank canvas. It was just soy stubble as far as you can see. The soil was pretty well dead. How are we turning that into a diverse, healthy farm that supports crops that we're trying to grow here, the animals that we're pasturing here, but also supports the ecology of the system as a whole. It's been a monocrop, kind of lifeless, ecologically deficient farming system. How do you flip that into a hyper-diverse ecological system? Our purpose today is developing the design and focusing on unrealized potential. They saw their capacity to be in service to the larger nested systems in which the cafe is located. So by the time we got to the second workshop, they didn't need us to facilitate the workshop, they did it themselves. Along the way, we've done all kinds of workshops with students, with community members. The purpose and each time, an understanding place. we walk away richer for it. They are generous with their ideas and their time. Their best production area. We came away with this wealth of ideas, and we could never enact all of them. But it really gave us hope that, yeah, there's a lot of possibility that this community would support. 
The Living Building Challenge has been around for about 15 years now. There are 20 imperatives. These imperatives are organized in petals or categories, things like place and energy and water and beauty and equity. People say, how do you guys do this? Well, it's not just us, it's, it's a community. <laughs> I asked people to bring their gloves and a hammer and we would provide the wine and cheese. One of the big things was tearing apart the house. We had so many wonderful people helping. We also got the stage wood from the North High School before they tore it down. So that was a chore. But yeah, that's now part of the flooring in the cafe. Living Building Challenge requires very high levels of performance. Net zero energy, net zero water. Okay, so six changes have been made on this plan. Trying to design a state-of-the-art commercial kitchen for a cafe with net zero energy and no combustion can be challenging. Essentially, on the energy side, you need to produce more energy from a renewable source on site than the building consumes. Right. Solar systems is how most projects provide net positive energy. So we want to minimize the size of the solar system by improving the energy efficiency of the building. The lower your load, the less expensive with your PV array. So the, the approach here is to conserve before you try to offset. We have a standard double wall construction. They're set 12 inches apart face to face. So we have 12 inches of insulation. We have an airtight vapor variable membrane to the inboard side of the structure and the wind tight waterproof membrane to the outboard side. You start with a robust energy efficient envelope triple pane windows, tight construction, high levels of insulation, good day lighting contributes to less artificial lighting, and then you put in smaller HVAC systems using really energy efficient HVAC equipment. Living Building Challenge is not about just building green, it's also about operating green. We don't have an ice machine, which is really unusual for a restaurant, obviously. If our guests want to have a cocktail, they bring their own ice. Yeah, it's become a real positive thing for us. There's no gas, there's no open flames, everything is electric. 90% of our cooking is induction, which is super efficient, 80% more efficient than gas, I've been told. Within the first week of cooking on this new induction system, there's not the heat, there's not the intensity. It's actually a lot smoother, if that's the right word for it. We're involved with growing the food, so we know what we're going to be using. We're in constant contact with the farm managers and use that in our decisions when we're making the menus. We spend time on the farm finding out what's fresh, doing a little harvesting ourselves, a lot of weeding. <laughs> and we take that knowledge back in the kitchen and do our thing. Our reservation system is unique to the area in that it is a ticketed reservation. We're not over-harvesting, we're not over-preparing. We are prepared for who comes in that evening. Not wasting food is important. Living Building Challenge really looks at whole systems. So not only a green building, but also the environment in total and how your project fits in with the local ecosystem. I admired their fortitude. They were constantly focused on the potential for impact on the larger food system in central Pennsylvania. As the restaurant has gotten up and going, we're developing a relationship where they bring in animals they produce, as well as sourcing animals that we bring in from local farms. The whole financing was frustrating. And because we were paying a living building challenge premium, we weren't successful at local banks. We had to look at different sources. One of our partners is Ag Choice Farm Credit, who were normal lenders to farms. It was a stretch for them to lend to uh, a restaurant. We had great conversations with West Penn Power Sustainable Energy Fund. They immediately saw the value to the community, the value to the industry as far as energy efficiency. The solar component was very important to them. 
So starting to put pressure on other more traditional financial sources to start considering the value option of a truly regenerative project. We're trying to not only educate our customers about the food, about eating responsible, eating healthy, but educate the community around us about the land, about the farming. We have a CSA, which is very popular. We have a home foods, prepared foods program, which gives us another income. We have cooking classes. We do workshops, tours. We're not selling just to the cafe. We've been selling to the community for the past three years. And we're providing them an opportunity to engage differently with their food. How will we engage with the community as a whole? How will we become the space that can share some of the things that we've learned and help to move that needle for being a real regenerative business? Environmentally, ecologically, community-wise, we've always looked at our project as a whole system. And you can't operate in a system without having true concern for everybody else in that system.